Hello everyone and welcome back to our FPS RPG game. And so today we're going to make a start on the FPS part of our FPS RPG. So we're going to take a look at how we're going to create our gun. Now it's not going to be the same as what you see in the Unreal 5 uh, first person shooter template. We're going to do something slightly different. So we're going to check that out, make our own gun and get started on putting that all together. So let's get started. So when making our FPS RPG, a game like this involves many, many systems. And so what we're going to do is we're going to break them down one by one. And we'll start off with the FPS part of the FPS RPG. So we're going to do the shooting. So at the moment, the uh, first one template comes along with this weapon component system that Epic have done in Unreal 5. We're not going to use this system. Um, I'm not a big fan of it. It feels a bit limited in that... Um, the it's harder to control what you have and what you don't have on your person um so we're going to create our own one so i'm going to delete this pickup rifle because i don't want that and instead we're going to go into our games folder and we're going to create a new folder called blueprints and i'm going to open this up and i'm going to create a new blueprint class called an actor class and then we'll call this one bp and in this game, we've got a gun, and it's a fantasy game, so I've thought of a cool name we can give it, and we'll give it the Spark Shot, and that's what it'll be called. So, Spark Shot. And we'll open it up. So, so in our, our uh, gun here, Spark Shot gun, uh, we need a mesh, uh, first and foremost, so let's create a mesh for this. So, I've actually brought in some meshes to use already. Um, let me remember where they are. They are here. And there's a few of them. I think it was the dwarven one that was the one I wanted to try and use. Let's have a look. And so we got this sort of musket looking, fantasy looking gun. Yeah, which is pretty nice. Okay. So we're going to use this. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go and add a stake mesh to this. Uh, yours might be a skeletal mesh. Either one. Doesn't really matter. You just need a gun. Um... But one thing you would want to make sure of with all your guns, if you have loads of different types of guns, is you ideally have them all facing the same way. Okay, so I typically always try and make them face X. So X here is the long way around. So I'm going to turn this around around. And the sole reason is that X is typically considered uh, forward in the uh, uh, in in the uh, in the actor. So if I put the world, you'll see there's X there forwards now. So, yeah, pretty good with that. Next, I'm going to put the root of this thing where the grip of the handle will be too. And this is so when I attach it to the character, it's going to attach to where the grip is of the gun. So I'm going to move that down here somewhat. I might have to turn off the snaps here just to get a bit more accurate to where I want it to be. And that's looking good. Okay. I like that. So let's now save that. And before we go any further, let's add it to our character so we can see what it looks like in our character's hands. So we're going to go over to our first person character. And we're not going to be using the weapon component system, as I said. So what we're going to do is we're going to add it as a child actor to our first person mesh here. So I'm going to go to add child actor. And we'll call this one gun. And the child actor class is going to be our spark shot gun. And it should appear like that. Now, because our gun here is a child actor and it's attached to our first person mesh, we can click over here on the parent socket, the folder icon, to see all the bones we could possibly attach this to. And I'm going to choose the grip point. So I'm going to click on this one. And there it is. So initially, as we can see here, the grip point of the socket is facing the incorrect way for our gun here. Um, again, I'm going to try and keep it all X's forwards. That's just a personal thing. You may have may be okay leaving it as it was. But I'm going to turn it around 90 degrees around here. So I'm going to go ahead and edit the bone socket of the character's hand. So to do that, I'm going to select the mesh. Double click on the thumbnail for the skeletal mesh asset. And inside here you should find in your skeleton tree uh, oh apologies no it being a skeleton not a mesh there you go uh, okay and we go down find the grip point probably a bit easier to search for it grip 
There it is. Like this. Okay, and I want to get that turned around. So 90 degrees. Okay. So I'm going to take the uh, rotator. And I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees this way. Hit save. I'm going to go back to my plain player character. And there it is working. Now, as you can see, the gun is absolutely massive. Uh, so let's fix that in the gun itself, not on the child actor. The reason why I don't want to do it on the child actor component is because there may be different guns which may be the correct size. And so I don't want to really affect that. But this gun is a bit too big. So let's go ahead and edit the spark shot blueprint itself. So I'm going to go into the game folder, blueprint, spark shot. And we're going to take this and I'm going to go to the scale. I'm going to lock it. So it keeps it all in uh, proportion. And let's try 0 0.75. So three quarters the size. This might need to adjust the route again, uh, depending on where the pivot is for each model you have. I say every model is going to be a little bit different based upon what you've got there. Like that. Okay. And if we go back to my player character, you can see that's looking a little bit better in terms of size. Now, angle-wise, we can see here it's going off the side a little bit. Okay, and that's mostly down due to like, the way the animation's been set up and the character has been set up for first person and the first person gun. So if I were to go into the game here, and oh, I need to make sure the animation is set to have rifle. Let's do that. Because in the first person character for the template, you have this boolean for house rifle. For now, we just tick it so it's always on. Uh, and that'll give the arms the correct position in there. Okay. So immediately you're gonna notice something. When you start walking, you're gonna get pushed around a lot. And that's because our gun still has collision. It's important to know that if you put something in your character's hands, anything you want at all, make sure it has no collision on it. So I'm gonna go down to uh, my character, go to the gun component, and I'm going to go tell the... Actually, let's go straight to the gun. Let's just do to the gun here. And I'm going to go down to the collision and change it to uh, overlap all. Okay. So now I can move around it un unimpeded by the gun's sort of uh, collision mesh. Okay, that's not looking too bad. We'll end up probably fixing and tweaking the animation a little bit. So the gun is held a little bit higher. So it's a little bit more obvious what it is, because it looks like more like a wand. Um, but yeah, it's looking not too bad there. Obviously, we've got a shadow issue to deal with, but we'll worry about that uh, later on. We're not, not too fussed right now. So for the gun, we're going to give it its basic properties to actually work. So whenever I'm creating a blueprint of any kind, um, I like to break it down into its variables and its functions straight away. So the variables I'm going to do is going to be uh, basic stuff like ammo. Uh, but more importantly, we're going to have current ammo. And that'll be a integer. Because you can only have whole bullets, you can't have half a bullet. So it makes sense to have ammo as an integer. Um, then we have max ammo. So this is the actual size of the, how much ammo the gun can hold. Now this thing looks like it can only shoot one shot at a time, but we're not worried about that. We are magical, we can do all sorts of things we want with this, being a fantasy like game we want. But if you're doing like a realistic FPS RPG, obviously that's not an issue whatsoever. So we've got current arrow and max ammo. Now alongside that, our gun will also have various stats uh, attributed to, to it. So things like strength, like how powerful the shot is, how much damage it does, uh, the range of it, all these various things as well. So we're going to go to the variables, and we're going to add some of these variables in. There no doubt will be more later on that we add, but let's just get a few basic ones in here. So we're going to take in damage, and this one's going to be a float. Um, we're going to have range, which again will be a float. And we're going to have the uh, crit chance. Being RPG, we want our weapons to have a crit chance. Again, a float. And I think that'll do for now. We'll come back to these in a moment. Then come the functions. So the gun is going to have a number of functions. Now, what I would recommend you do, if you're especially starting off with your games and making games for the first time, you want to kind of like make a list of uh, on paper, like what kind of functionalities does each of these actors actually have. So looking at gun, what can you actually do with a gun? 
And so break it down as granular as possible. So we've got pull trigger. Yeah. You've got release trigger. Fire bullet. Reload. Okay, so you've got a few basics there. Um, so let's go now into pull trigger. So when pull trigger is happening, we want it to shoot a bullet. So it's quite simply, we could just get it to be fire bullet. Now, when you're creating each of your functions or events, you have to understand that you're going to have it in three parts. You're going to have the start part, which is the event or function it call itself. You'll have the end part, which is the actual effect. And then you have a bit in the middle, which is a condition. So when we're f firing a bullet and we pull the trigger, we, the condition is going to check whether or not we, before we fire the bullet, do we actually have ammo? So when we pull the trigger, we're going to do, check the ammo count. Now for that, we're going to make a function for this. So we do a function called uh, can fire gun. And this is going to do a very simple check to check to see if we actually have the ammo available. So current ammo, we'll drag out. And go with current ammo is greater than zero. Uh, actually, we don't need a branch for this. We can just do a return node for this. And put in our boolean into the end of the return node. Okay. And to make our lives a little bit easier, and also to make it a little bit more performant, what we want it to do, we're going to make this a pure function. Now, what pure function means is that when I go back to my pull trigger and, and drag in a can fire gun, it comes in like this, one of these green nodes. Now, as you can see, it doesn't require an execute line, and that's because it's going to go and get fetched the data as of and when it needs it. So you'll get the most up-to-date data possible every time you do it. So no matter how far fast I pull it, it's going to always get the most accurate uh, value from here. So can fire gun, if it's true, fire bullet. So we've got the start, the condition, the effect. Excellent. Okay, so that'll do there. Compile, save. And then we're going to go to the fire bullet function. And in fire bullet, we've got a few things we'll do. Now, when you're making a game, there are a gun game, there are two types of guns you can make. There's a projectile-based gun and a hit trace gun. The hit trace gun is more like your assault rifles, anything that's like super fast. Um, these are invisible line traces which are going to go out and check to see if your gun's lined up with anyone when you pull the trigger and deal damage to them. Um, that's what we're going to do for this one. But the other type is a projectile where it actually shoots an actual actor out into the world and will deal damage. And we'll be using something like that later on when we're doing like grenades uh, or the equivalent of grenades. Uh, but right now we're doing a hit trace gun. So on the fire bullet here, we're going to do a line trace by a channel. Now, it could be quite tempting when you're making a, a first-person shooter to make it like you would expect a gun to behave in real life. You'd want a line trace to come out of the barrel in a dead straight line and aim where you want it to aim. However, what you're going to find is that the it is very difficult to aim the barrel to the centre of the screen perfectly. Um, so it makes more sense to basically fake it so it's going to go to wherever the line, tra uh, wherever the, uh, the center of the screen is pointing at. So the center of the screen being a first person game is the camera. So I just get the player camera manager, which returns the current camera. And from that, I'm gonna get the actor location for that. And I'll give him my start point. The end point is the player camera manager's direction. So I'm gonna do the get forwards vector multiply that by the range so we're going to take that multiply and convert this bottom vector here to a float and let's drag in the range put that in there you then want to add these two vectors together so this is the end location and this is the offset so add them two together you get the end point in world space like so now for testing purposes we've got a draw debug type and i'm going to turn that on for duration just so we can test it out and see what it looks like. So fire bullet goes into line trace. And right now, I'm not going to worry about the end result of the actual damage being done or effects or anything like that. We're not worried about that just yet. We're going to leave it like this. Okay. So we actually now need to make this work. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our content drawer. 
and we're going to go find our input settings. So our input settings, we go into uh, the game folder, first person input. And in our default uh, controls, we've put in, we've got the IA shoot. Now, the way they've made it for the template is they give two different contexts, one for weapons, one without. We're always going to have a weapon, so we're just going to put in a default. We're not worried about anything else here. So I'm going to add shooting to this one. So IA shoot. And that's going to be left click. So you can click the little button here and then push any key and you'll get the left mouse button. And we're going to add another one for our gamepad, which would be the right trigger. And you've got two options, the axis or the action. We want to pick the action. So it triggers as soon as we push it. And close that. Okay, now let's go back to our first person character. Now I want this gun to, uh, actually not, not on the first person character, I'm going to go to the spark shot, the actual gun itself, sorry, and go to the event graph. We'll do it here. And I'm going to put in the IA shoot as an enhanced input action on our gun. Okay, so when this is started, I'm going to take it to pull trigger. And even though we haven't put anything in there yet, we're going to do through release trigger whenever I cancel um, the uh, the shoot. Okay. And we're going to plug in the completed as well. I believe that'd be right. So with that now in there, if I go to test it out, you'll notice that it doesn't yet shoot. And that's because we are using an actor that hasn't had its inputs enabled on it. So the way inputs work, there's a stack of actors that are added to this input stack, which can receive inputs. Uh, that gun is not part of that stack yet. So to make it be part of that stack, we're going to go to begin play. And we're going to do enable input. And give that the player controller. And when you say drop the gun or swap the gun out, you turn it, you disable the input on it. So you turn it off. So get player controller. And then next, we need to go down and make sure we actually give ourselves some ammo. So go to current ammo, we'll just give us 32. Uh, max ammo, 32. And we might as well do damage while we're here, 10. Range, we're going to do uh, 3,000. And crit chance, we'll do, I don't know, 5. Pile save. Okay, so now when I push play and I left click, we get a line trace out. From the gun to the center of the screen. Okay. And now you press so our gun is shooting. Now it doesn't look like much because obviously you've got no sound effects, no visual effects, no actual bullet coming out, no damage being done, no physics being done, all that stuff in good time. So the main thing is you want to make sure that you've got this click and you've got this line tray is appearing when you click. Um, if you don't see it appearing, go double check the debug is turned on for duration and double check that you've actually put ammo in the gun before to worry about anything else. Okay. So there you go, we've now got our gun effectively shooting. Obviously, we need to add loads of stuff to it still yet. So what we're going to do in the next part is actually make it do those things. We're going to make it so it shoots at, uh, bullets and we expend bullets from our reload, uh, add a reload to it and also start adding some effects in there, like applying damage to things. You can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can find all my videos early before anyone else from just $1 a month. Thank you so much to everyone who's supporting the channel over on Patreon and on YouTube members. Thanks for watching, make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.